Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the 176th meeting of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club. The Gabby's Toastmasters Club is the first of the three Gabby's clubs that we have. The Gabby's is a family of three community clubs. The Gabby's Toastmasters Club, the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club, and the Gabby's International Toastmasters Club. To know more about our clubs, please visit our website, www.thegabbystmc.com. Today's meeting will be for two hours. We are expecting all the guests to stay there for the entire duration of the meeting. If you are attending the meeting in person, please ensure that you do not leave the meeting room when a speech is on or when an evaluation is in progress. If you are attending the meeting online, we request you to not move with your camera on. Please do keep your mics muted during the course of the meeting, but we would encourage everyone to keep their videos on if their bandwidth permits. The Gabby's as a club practices diversity and inclusion in letter and in spirit. So while Postmasters International does not have any specific restrictions or talking about any particular topics, if you are talking on subjects which are sensitive like sex, religion, and politics during the course of your speech, evaluation, or any of the opportunities that you get to come here and speak or speak online, we would request you to exercise caution that you are not hurting the feelings or the sensitivities of others. We have a diverse audience from different backgrounds, different geographies. We would respect you to be mindful of individual preferences and individual choices. Let me now welcome the presiding officer of today's meeting. The presiding officer for today's meeting is the charter president, is the charter president of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club and the current president of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club, distinguished Toastmaster Nancy Goyle. Mm -hmm. Distinguished Toastmaster Nancy Goyle has completed five paths in Toastmaster Pathways and is one of the and has, and has the record of completing one path in just three weeks. She is one of the recipients of the Grand Slam Master Mentor Award, the Outstanding Toastmaster Award, and the Spearhead Award. Outside Toastmasters, this distinguished Toastmaster Nancy Goel is an entrepreneur and also a data analyst. And she is absolutely looking forward to graduating to become a pet parent today. More on that coming your way during our introduction. Over to you, DTM Nancy. Thank you so much, distinguished Toastmasters Saurabh Dutta. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear fellow Toastmasters, that was our Sergeant at Arms, distinguished Toastmasters Saurabh Dutta. Maybe have a round of applause for him. Thank you. Good morning, Gabby's. Good morning. Such low energy on Saturday morning. Good morning, Gabby's. Good morning. Good morning. That's more like it. That's more like it. It's an absolute pleasure for me to be presiding over this 176th meeting. I always come with a smile because whenever I come on stage, I always see we have accomplished so much during the entire week that I have to announce here. Now, what do I have to announce here? First thing first, we have completed renewals and after 31st of March, where do we stand? We stand at 60 four as a total strength for three clubs for the Gabby's standing at 28, the Gabby's online at 12 and the Gabby's international Toastmasters club standing at 24. With this, now you might be looking at numbers and thinking what's happening here. We have achieved president distinguished club status for all three clubs put together all three clubs, 10 by 10 DCP points for all three clubs with the youngest one just got chartered in the month of December. Three months and we are PDC. That's something most of the people, most of the clubs just strive to achieve. And we have achieved that. 
for all three clubs. Apart from that, we have got another news. We are already leading the charts in terms of educational awards with 58 awards achieved by the Gabby's Toastmasters Club and the Gabby's Online leading the charts in terms of ratio, member award is to member ratio. It's on top in the entire district, District 92. We also have one more news. We have got educational awards filed by two. One has completed the path, path. That is Toastmaster Smruti Mohanty. She has completed her second path, innovative planning, or rather persuasive influence. Persuasive influence it is. And distinguished Toastmaster Saurav Datta filing is level one. So two awards this week. Sir. Kudos to you. That's about the news. Now we have got some guests in the room and online as well. I don't see any guests online. Okay, so I I would like to call the guests in the room to come forward and into, introduce themselves. A quick 30-second introduction. We'll start with you, Mr. Mohan. Yes. Hi, Tosh Master. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So I introduce speak myself. So I'm basically from Hyderabad. So from last few years, staying in Bangalore, currently working as a marketing associate at a MNC company. So today I'm joining as a guest. So I would like to join this Toast Master clubs. I would like to improve my communication and strengthen my skills. So looking forward to joining the club. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohan. Thank you. Welcome to the cabins. May I request our next guest to have Quick introduction. Yeah, hi team. Uh, good morning. My name is Jen. I uh, uh, am from the east of Bangalore. I stay quite far off in a place called Hoskote. I just traveled uh, 28 odd kilometers. I work, I have my own firm. I do website maintenance. Uh, I have a 24 member team outside Bangalore. And I am really looking forward to Toastmasters and being part of the team. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jayan. Welcome to the meeting. May I request you to come forward? A quick 30 second introduction. Hello all, good morning. My name is uh, Mahavir. Uh, I run a company, uh, Micronext. We are into retail technology solutions. We help retail brands uh, with their uh, digital transformation. And I'm here at the Toastmasters meeting to first understand what Toastmasters is all about and yes, improve my communication and presentation skills. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not the least, Mr. Satish Kanan. Hey, hi everyone. My name is Satish. Uh, used to be a Toastmaster before. I just, um, I know Saurav very well. So Saurav invited me to this meeting. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a builder into construction. And I'm looking forward to this meeting and hopefully maybe, uh, you know, restarting my journey with Toastmasters again. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Welcome to the meeting. With this, we welcome all our guests to our today's meeting, meeting number 176. All right. Now I call this meeting to order, meeting number 176. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. It's time to introduce the Toastmaster of the day. Our Toastmaster of the day is somebody who is a happy-go-lucky person. The moment you look at her face, you feel like smiling with her. She's so energetic, so enthusiastic, and she is the only one I've met so far who is happy to be a middle child. You ask my sister, she would crib about it for years and years and years. But this is the only person I've met who says that she is happy, so happy to be middle child. You get to get the best of both worlds. Please put your hands together for the soft skills trainer, for someone who is having her stint as an HR, and our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Yogita Upadhyay. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Nancy. Can we please have a round of applause for our presiding officer for such a wonderful introduction? Thank you. Good morning, Toastmasters, visiting Toastmasters and guests. I welcome you all to an exploration of the extraordinary within the ordinary unveiling hidden talents. Today we embark on a journey to uncover 
the hidden gems that lie beneath the surface, talents that often go unnoticed but hold the potential to dazzle and inspire. Imagine a world where finger contortionists, spoon benders, gum bubble sculptors, extreme balancers, and toe writers reign supreme. These individuals showcase the rare and unique talents that make them stand out from the crowd. Yet, how often do you notice such talents? Don't you think we are overlooking our hidden talents? Maybe we are also pro in something? We might be dismissing them as insignificant or trivial. How many of you have heard about these words? Spoon benders, gum bubble sculptors, toe writers. Can I have the raise of hands? Great. So there are a few people who have heard. Let me just share my screen. Give me a word. Have you also recognized such a talent, by the way? Those who have heard? Okay. Nevertheless, I start with showcasing you some of the talents. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Great. So this is what is finger contortion. This is how they do the work. They bend their fingers into unusual positions. And don't you think it's something really marvelous to be doing something like that and like that and creating some you know, visual images out of this. Maybe you could even drive a career out of it. We never know what holds. Spoon bending. If you closely look at this image, the man has completely bent out the spoon. And you know, not by the physical force, but by his psychic powers. Isn't it interesting? Now, there is gum bubble sculpting. We all like chewing gums. I mean, most of us do, but have you ever thought gums can be used even for this? This has this can be used to sculpt the shape of an animal or an object. As we see, we have an elephant here, and it is gum bubble sculpting. Extreme balancing. This, I guess, you must have seen in many of the Bollywood and Hollywood movies. This is not very unique, but it is very, very difficult. This man, which I have uh, shown here, he is balancing precariously on a tap of on the top of a stack of chairs twenty feet high. Just imagine, imagine standing on a chair without without uh, keeping with keeping your legs there, here and there. For me, it's not possible, but for some people, it is. Toe writing. There are many of you must have heard the news that a man has achieved 70% in his board examination by simply writing by his toes. Seems difficult, right? I am an average student and I secured just 70% by using both of my hands and all my capabilities. Nevertheless, that's my talent of being an average. Still, I am reflecting here a person or the art of writing with toe wherein not only you can just show it as your creativity, you can also use it to showcase that you are no less than people who have their both the hands and both the legs. To be continued in the later stages. All right. So in a society that often values conformity over individuality, it's easy to bury our talents beneath the weight of societal expectations, isn't it? But what if we embrace these hidden treasures, allowing them to shine brightly and enrich our lives in ways we never imagined? Before we get lost in visualizing this, put a halt to your thoughts. We will talk about this more. For now, let's not keep our speakers waiting. For the benefits of guests, I would like to explain the structure of today's meeting. 
In a regular Toastmasters meeting, we have three sections, prepared speech section, second is table topic section, and the third is evaluation section. We have a very special team for giving us valuable insights as we keep moving forward with each section. May I now call upon the head of a special team, the general evaluator of the day. He is a software engineer working in Bangalore. His interests include music, cooking, sports, tracking, traveling, doing adventure sports like rafting, paragliding, etc. And the list goes on and on. He's keen on learning new things and being able to do something that has an impact. Please put your hands together for a general evaluator for the day, Toastmaster Chaitanya. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Yogita. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you all doing? Good. 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 Awesome. So uh, we meet a lot of people uh, on a daily basis and create our own perspective about them and remember them through what they did. But sometimes we see them doing something very unique and that changes our whole perspective. Uh, maybe that is a, some, some kind of hidden talent. Now imagine if everyone was courageous enough to explore their hidden talents, the world would have been a very different place. Our Toastmaster of the day will continue telling us about more, uh, more about the hidden talents of people around the world. But today, we, we, have, we are represent in the meeting of Toastmasters and Toastmasters is not just a place for improving public speaking, but also a place to unlock and find our own hidden talents. In order to do so, it is important for us to progress, learn from it, and get some feedback. So today, as a general evaluator, I will be giving feedback for the whole meeting, but this I can't do alone. So for that, I have an amazing Taggle team with me who will be helping me out through this. Let me call them one by one to present you all their responsibilities. Let me introduce the timer. Toastmaster Alvia Saji. Alvia is a diligent intern at Signify, brings her talents from Christ University to the tech world. Hailing from Calicut, Kerala, she embraces diverse passions from the rhythmic movement of dance to the soulful melodies of the song. Over to you, Toastmaster Alvia. Thank you so much, General Evaluator Chaitanya. A very good morning to the guests and uh, Toastmasters present in the meeting. My name is Alvia, and I have taken up the role of a timer for today. So as a timer, I'm pretty sure that everybody understands as to what a timer does. But uh, let me explain it again uh, to you all. As a timer, I will be timing every uh, all of the speeches, evaluations, and um, everything that happens within the meeting and make sure that you know they um, uh, uh, happen in a very smooth manner in the sense that I will be raising green, yellow, blue, uh, blue and red cards uh, in, a, in order to alert the speakers of the time that is left for them to complete their speech. At first, I will be raising the green card. Then at second, I'll be raising the yellow card. When I'll be raising these cards, let's, let me explain to you. For the table topic speakers, uh, the time that they have uh, to give their speech would be or the length at which uh, or the duration that they can take to give their speech is two minutes and within the two minutes they should be able to complete their speech so how it works is that I will be raising a green card when they are at the first minute and I'll be raising the yellow card when they are at the first minute and 30 second i'll be raising the green red card again when they are at the second minute and that is when they're supposed to be stopping with their speeches and also another thing to keep in mind is that they have to not end their speech before i raise the uh, green card otherwise they will be considered uh, disqualified they'll be disqualified basically so this is how it works for the individual evaluators again um they have uh, they, their speeches should be in uh, uh, two to three minutes uh, length at the second minute i'll be raising the green card at the uh, at 
two minute thirty seconds, I'll be raising the yellow card at the. third minute i'll be raising the red card so this is how it works i hope everybody is understood and in the end i'll be presenting a report as well uh, wherein you know people who have qualified and not would be shown um, and that's all from my end thank you so much general thank you so much toastmaster alvia for uh, explaining your responsibilities in such an elaborate manner and it is uh, very clear how the timer works Now let me call upon upon the our counter for the day, Toastmaster Sudarma Pereira. Toastmaster Sudarma is a chartered accountant by profession. She is interested in learning new things, getting to know new people, and traveling to new places. Toastmaster Sudarma is also the vice president education of the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club. Over to you, Toastmaster Sudarma. Thank you, General Agarwal. Good morning, Toastmasters and guests. As our counter today, I will I will listen to. All unnecessary words and sounds used by all the speakers of today's meeting. I will focus on five major areas. First one, filler words, ah, uh, mm, uh, and and inappropriate words like but and and uh, filler words, inappropriate words, and repetitive words. I I I this means this means, and long and short pauses. I will submit my report at the. Generation. Over to you, generation. Thank you, Toastmasters Sudarma. Now let me call upon the grammarian of the day, Toastmaster Shri Lakshmi Hegde. She is a certified image consultant and a soft skill trainer by profession. Her interest in public speaking and leadership skills made her join Toastmasters. She is a double triple crown winner and double path breaker, and also the founder of Imaginetic Image Consulting Services. Over to you, Sri Lakshmi Agre. Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Chaitanya Ji. Chaitanya, uh, today as a grammarian, as I will not, I make a note of very good usage of words, uh, improper, uh, also improper usage of the words. I recommend to use it appropriately next time. And as a grammarian, it is very important to use word of the day. And word of the day for today is aptitude, means natural ability or a skill, a meaning. Example: We will take your personal attitudes and abilities into your account. Another example: My kid has very little aptitude towards sport. I request everyone to use the word of the day as much as possible. If anyone uses the word of the day, I will raise and give your hand, raise up, hands, raise up. Over to you, Toastmaster Chaitanya. Thank you, Toastmaster Shri Lakshmi. Now it's time for the last member of my team, the listener, Toastmaster Raghava. He is a self-motivated, analytical, and inquisitive individual. Currently working as a space technology consultant with Deloitte, post his stint of eight years as a scientist at ISRO, he believes in structured learning and self-discipline, patience, and persistence as most important tools for both personal and professional goals. Over to you, Toastmaster Raghava. Thank you, General Evaluator. Good morning, all uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests who are uh, both off online and offline. So. Uh, just I am the listener of the day, which uh, always suits my role. Also, uh, being the personality, I am the great listener, as my friends say. <laughs> so uh, I'll be listening to everyone's uh, talk and speeches and everyone, and I'll be drafting some questions, short questions, just to test our skills at the end of the meeting. So over to you, Chetanya, general evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Raghava, and thank you, my Tagal team, for presenting your responsibilities to everyone. So this will be all from my side, and I'll come back later towards the end of the meeting. For now, handing over the stage back to our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Yogita. Thank you, General Evaluator, for explaining your responsibilities very well, and thank you, the Tagal team itself, as well. Now, let's get started with the first section, which is the prepared speech section. Our first speaker is Toastmaster Anand. Toastmaster Anand Krishnan is a software engineer at Dell. He indulges in hobbies such as watching movies, reading books, and listening to music. Intrigued by Sandeep Pelikar's enthusiastic endorsement of Gabby's and its members, Toastmaster Anand, who was a Toastmaster earlier and whose communication skills have dwindled over a decade, decided to rejoin our community with hopes of revitalizing his abilities and engaging in personal growth. He eagerly anticipates the learning experience that Gabby's has to offer him again. He is attempting his level one project two on pathway engaging humor. 
the project name is writing a speech with a purpose the purpose of this project is to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well organized speech on any topic the purpose of this speech from his end is to entertain and to convey that good friends should hold each other to high standards he would be evaluated by distinguished toastmaster saurav dutta dtm saurav kindly confirm your presence yes i'm there okay timer please note that the speech length is 5 to 7 minutes toastmaster anand good old days good old days toastmaster anand what is the fourth most exaggerated thing in the world sharma ji ka beta <laughs> or the concept of sharma ji ka beta <clears throat> that is the fourth most exaggerated thing in the world you can never beat sharma ji ka beta if you scored a 100 out of 100 in math sharma ji ka beta he scored a 100 out of 100 in math physics and english if you learned how to swim and you can now swim the entire length of the swimming pool sharma ji ka beta he just swam across the english channel and if you are a good bathroom singer sharma ji ka beta he took part in indian idol now no one really knows who is this sharma ji ka beta who this real sharma ji ka beta is nobody even knows who sharma ji is but everybody knows this sharma ji ka beta is better than you for sure but i'm not here to talk about sharma ji ka beta my speech is not about sharma ji ka beta madam toastmaster ladies and gentlemen both online and offline the third most exaggerated thing in the world is when people talk about the good old days i notice that when people talk about the good old days they always exaggerate and i also noticed two patterns the more infrequently they meet you and the more far back an incident is the more they exaggerate Well, let me talk about a couple of examples. My friend Vinod, he was my classmate from school, and he stays in my area, and I bump into him every once in a week. And for him, his idea of the good old days, man, remember back in school, we used to bunk school, and we used to go into a movie every month. We used to do it. Not really. We did it once. Yeah, it was good. The second time we got caught, and we got trashed within an inch of our lives by the PT master, and we never did it again. <laughs> But then the way we know the remembers it, I mean, definitely exaggerate. And then we come to Avinash, Avinash, my ex colleague. I meet him once in three months or so, and he tells me about the good old days. Man, Anand, remember we used to work for fourteen, fifteen hours a day, and then every Friday we used to have that after work party. Well, we used to go out for masal dosa. I mean, if that is his definition of a party, it surely isn't mine. and then we come to sanjeev sanjeev sharma now technically he is also a sharma ji ka beta but he is not that sharma ji ka beta that sharma ji ka beta is a legend he scored 100 over 100 of 100 he swam across the english channel this sharma ji ka beta is different he is my friend <laughs> he barely passed 12 standard swimming i only taught him swimming but sharma ji ka beta this sharma ji ka beta he has got a hidden talent and that is his aptitude to exaggerate when he talks about the good old times oh my goodness he was my hostel mate my classmate in college and i meet him only once in two years or three years every time he comes to india he says man remember that time we stole that bottle of alcohol from the hostel warden's room it was a bottle of water we borrowed from his office and we got caught and we had to replace it and when was the time we smuggled that dog into the classroom oh man that was fun it was actually a puppy that found its way into college and it was loitering outside the classroom we had absolutely nothing to do with the dog but sharma ji ka beta he has really fond memories and he has very fond memories of the good old days sharma ji ka beta this sharma ji ka beta talking about the good old days now this is the second most exaggerated thing in the world with each of my friends it is easy for me to disagree with them it is easy for me to correct them but i choose not to do that for me it is more important to be with them in the moment 
to bond with them. It is less important to be right and more important to be a good friend. Now, in the middle of all this, I have spoken to you about the fourth most exaggerated thing in the world, the third most exaggerated thing in the world, and also the second most exaggerated thing in the world. I'm sure you're all thinking, what is the most exaggerated thing in the world? Well, it's this speech. Of course, this is the most exaggerated thing in the world. But I know that a few years down the line, when I am reminiscing about the good old days with my good friend Sandeep Belekar, and I talk about this speech, I'm sure I'm going to talk to him about how wonderful this speech was mm -hmm. and what a good job I did with this speech. Madam Toastmaster. What an incredible, wonderful, wonderfully portrayed speech, Toastmaster Anand. And you have touched the most important aspect that every one of us has faced for sure. Sharma Ji Ka Beta. Thank you for making us relive the good old days. And it is very important to be a good, good friend. A beautiful speech, Toastmaster Anand. Can we please get a round of applause for him? Thank you. Now it's time for our second speaker to keep the momentum rolling. Toastmaster Sandeep Belekar. Toastmaster Sandeep has recently re retired from his corporate career after working for the last 27 years. He was an active Toastmaster for eight years between 2008 to 2016, but took a break from Toastmasters and now has restarted his journey with us. He is attempting his level one and project three on his pathway presentation mastery. The project name is Introduction to Vocal Variety and Body Language. The purpose of this project is for the member to practice using a vocal variety or body language to enhance a speech. And he would be evaluated by Toastmaster Mukun Joshi. Toastmaster Mukun, could you please confirm your presence? Yes, I am here. Excellent. Timer, please note that the speech length is five to seven minutes. Toastmaster Sandeep, the little boy. The little boy, Toastmaster Sandeep. My favorite childhood game was target practice. I had one little Nerf gun and the target more often than not was my younger brother. Mm -hmm. So I would stand in one corner with my gun in hand and make my brother run around everywhere and shoot at him. I know it sounds mean on the hindsight, but hey, he grew up to be a great runner. <laughs> <laughs> I have tortured my brother in so many different ways. He has been trashed by his our parents. He has fallen from heights and he has broken, broken bones. And unfortunately, I was responsible in some or other way for all his orders. Luckily for me, most children are built to survive the stupidity of their elder siblings. So my brother is doing really well. The small kids, they fall, they get dropped, they break something, but very soon they get up and things go back to normal. It never is end of the world if just a boy falls down. But today, I'm going to tell you a story about a boy who got dropped and changed the world for him. Good morning, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. There once lived a kid named Paul. Now mind you this, Paul is central to the story, but the story is not about him. Paul's father ran a confectionery. Paul's mother, she was a housewife. Paul loved target practice just like me. He didn't have a nerf gun, but he used to love throwing water balloons at the kids playing in the lawn downstairs. Paul, what all Paul wanted was to grow up and be the fighter pilot. Paul's dad was dead against him. He hated motorcycles and he hated aeroplanes. He told Paul, Paul, you must become a doctor. 
you can save people, you can heal people. Paul's mother, on the other hand, she was a little more supportive of his dreams. She said, Paul, you want to fly aeroplane? You go fly aeroplane. Paul was ever so indebted to his mother. He wanted the whole world to know what a great woman she was. Paul grew up and joined US Air Force. When he's not, not a little Paul anymore, he was now known as Pilot Colonel Paul Tibbets. Colonel Paul Tibbets was 20, 22 years of age when the world got pulled into a catastrophe called World War II. The war that killed 60 million people. 40 million of them were just civilians. Most of the people died due to starvation, poverty, and deliberate genocide. Paul was assigned a Boeing B-29 bomber for a special mission. The mission was so secret that nobody knew about that mission. But they were told, this mission will end the war. This mission will save the world. Paul was excited. He thought this mission is his opportunity to honor his mother. So he painted his mother's name on the bonnet of his aeroplane. Enola Gay. On 24 hours before the mission, the team got the briefing. Their mission was to drop a single bomb on a town in the middle of Japan. On 6th August, 1945, 8.15 AM, Paul's B-29 bomber Enola Gay dropped a bomb on a city called Hiroshima. The bomb that killed 60,000 people. It obliterated everything in the three kilometers radius. The sound wave traveling at the supersonic speed destroyed 70% of the city. The, ironically, this bomb, the first of its kind, was called the little boy. The little boy that destroyed the lives of millions of people. The little boy that got dropped and changed the world for it. Over to you, Madam Postmaster. That was really an interesting, inspiring speech, Toastmaster Sandeep. And I feel myself lucky to witness all the adversities on my little brother as well. And often the reason was me. Thank you for bringing to us Captain Paul and the little boy. Can we have a round of applause for our second speaker? Thank you, Toastmaster Sandeep. Now it's time for our speaker number three. Speaker three is Toastmaster Sanjay Jain. Toastmaster Sanjay he is a chartered accountant by profession. Outside Toastmasters and accounting, Sanjay has an aptitude for playing cricket, chess and loves traveling. He is attempting his level three and project three and his pathway is leadership development. The project name is to connect with storytelling. The purpose of this project is for the member to practice using a story within a speech or giving a speech that is a story. He would be evaluated by DTM Nancy. DTM Nancy, could you please confirm your presence once again? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. So, Toast Timer, please note that the speech length is five to seven minutes. Toastmaster Sanjay, time is precious. Time is precious. Toastmaster Sanjay. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, time is precious. Time creates all things and time destroys us all. Time burns the say, uh, time burns and Time again extinguishes that fire. How many of you agree that time is precious? Yes, we all agree that time is precious. 
only that we cannot stop time or we cannot control the time but if we plan properly our time we can be more productive and more meaningful to ourselves and to the society at large one of the stories i would like to share here is that when i decided to purchase a car uh, i and my wife thought that we will be purchasing a car with certain budget and things like that we thought of spending around 2 hours on a weekends and go to the various showrooms and start purchasing the car we we started studying the various futures and things like that one day uh, uh, we could not meet our deadline why because there was so much confusions and so many models and things like that so we missed our deadline we again uh, uh, approach uh, we again reschedule our time uh, table uh, calendar and again reschedule our thing that we will be purchasing the car within this time so uh, again uh, what happened is that we could not certainly uh, make a choice why because there were so many models and so many things to be considered while purchasing a car so my wife got angry at the showroom and she said that if you want to purchase a car make a definite plan or forget about it at that moment only we both had a heated debate and finally we we made a decision and purchased the car so here is that sometimes angry also on heated debate also makes us to take a decision faster than only planning and thinking about it so but in hindi it is said that anger we should not take decision in anger but we are taken a big decision in in the situation where angry also play, played an important role so the learning here is that uh, we have to plan our things but we have to also see that what are the resources available and what you are going to particularly achieve in that thing we we cannot just uh, uh, plan our uh, things uh, in a haphazard manner and try to achieve it so a particular plan should be a detail oriented we should have done our research in advance and then should have written down all each and every step in a particular manner so that we could have achieved that thing in advance the second is that one of the uh, one of the friend in one of the seminar said that there is no time uh, there is no work life balance for that the speaker had told that uh, how many days are there in a year he asked the person he said that 365 days in that how many days are your holidays and things like that he said that saturday and sunday are holidays so if you remove that one out four days from that you will be getting 261 days in that 261 days how many holidays the company offers the company offers around 42 days and you will uh, the the remaining days are 260 uh, 219 days in the 290 days how many hours you work he said that you we work for around 8 hours a day the total hours work is 1752 hours we work in a day that if we see we if you remove the coffee break tea break then you, you will be working effectively 6 hours a day if we work for 6 hours it is 1314 hours if we divide this by 24 hours it is only 55 days you are working or if you divide it by 8 hours then you are working only for 165 days he said that if if you are working for 165 days or 55 days in a year and if the company is paying you the amount and you you are able to take care of yourself your family and other needs then where is the question of the work life balance for this it is understood that it is our planning we are not able to plan properly so that we say that there is no work life balance Uh, and things like that but the major uh, focus should be that we we should uh, uh, plan our things in a certain manner that we 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 can uh, yeah, understand what is important what is not important we we scroll social media for hours together and then tell about that there is no time time available for doing important things so so how we can do it i attended one of the time management course in online in that the speaker said that we should factor each and every time which we spend whether we are spending 
uh, on our relationship or on the phone calls or on the social media. Everything is important in life. Nothing is uh, not important. You have to miss, but balance it in a particular manner, giving more importance to what will uh, you are going to achieve and give less importance to things which are important, but not that much important. If you miss it also, there is nothing going to happen. So yeah, at the end of the day, it was understood that time can be managed and, and be more productive than uh, telling that, that and understanding that time is precious and use it wisely for society and and for yourself. Thank you very much. Over to the PMO. That was a great speech, Toastmaster Sanjay. And I completely agree with the statement that timing is everything, as managing time decides a life completely. And how sometimes procrastination kills a time, we really need to keep track of what we are doing and how we are doing and by when we have to do it. Can we have a round of applause for our third speaker? Toastmaster Sanjay, thank you so much for bringing us to our notice. Timer, could you please tell us if there were any disqualifications? No, there weren't any disqualifications. All are qualified. Wow, great job done, Toastmasters. Congratulations to all the speakers. Now let's quickly have a five minutes breather to revive our energy. It's 10.46 in my uh, watch. We'll come back by 10.51. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sudarma, uh, pause the recording. Okay, I pause. Is everyone back? Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you are all geared for some more spontaneity and fun. As we journey deeper into the realm of hidden talents, let's pause to consider the celebrities who walk amongst us. Their extraordinary abilities often hidden behind the glitz and glamour of fame. From actors who moonlight as painters to singers who are excellent culinary arts, the list of hidden talents among the rich and famous is endless. Now we'll go for a quiz, for a short quiz. Before that, I would like any of you to tell me if they know about any celebrity who has such hidden talents. Do you know of any such celebrities? Is DTM Nancy suggesting something? No, that's all I got. Uh, nice. I can't... Okay, nevertheless. In case if you're not aware, I'll showcase some of the celebrities who are well known to you. And they have some hidden talents which were not known to you. Who doesn't know the King Khan? The Bacha of Bollywood. He's the Shah Rukh Khan. Can you tell me what you think he is doing? What his hidden talent could be? One of his hidden talents. Painting. Painting. Exactly. Though it is depicted in the picture, but still I thought it would be fun to play a quiz like that. Yes, he is not known to many of us, but Shah Rukh Khan is an excellent painter. He has also painted with one of the renowned painters of the world. Okay, next we have Steve Martin. Do you know what is he doing? Playing the guitar. Sitar. He's playing the banjo. Very, very efficient in playing musical instruments. And apart from his career in acting in other fields, he is also known for playing banjo. Who doesn't know the Mary Com of Bollywood? 
प्रियंका चोपड़ा जोन ऑब्वियसली बट वॉट इज शी डूंग वट यू थिंक शी मस्ट बी टैलेंटेड इन ओके बॉक्सिंग इज इट singer she's she also is, mixed martial arts she is also a singer and she is very very efficient in kickboxing priyanka chopra was already pre- uh, was already efficient in kickboxing and that is why there was a major reason of taking her into the bollywood film mericom and uh, there were many cases that came that why not a uh, similar actress or from the same region could have been taken it's not only the acting she is uh, she is skilled at she is also skilled at the thing she was so showcasing though there she was only showcasing boxing but she is efficient in kickboxing now we have this beautiful lady angelina jolie what do you think is she doing i'm sure not many of you will get it fighters cooking <laughs> okay okay let them come cooking mothers and boxing i'm sorry i didn't i didn't hear sorry outing outing oh no <laughs> that everybody i think is skilled at in the industry she is skilled at throwing knives now you would ask what do you mean by throwing knives i can also throw a knife like that no my <laughs> dear she is skilled at aiming the location and throwing knife exactly at point dangerous is that you never never know angelina jolie could be so dangerous Murder is such a thing. She's good at murder. Murder, she didn't murder anyone. That's a skill. Okay. And now we have Johnny Depp. Drama. Who's this? Sorry. Drama. Hunger Games. Terrorist. <laughs> He's also music. Musician. He's into music. He plays band. He's into music. He is into a band, and he's a very good guitarist. And who of who among a few have seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I have seen. I love Mr. Willy Wonka. From his, he is extremely talented. He can portray any of the roles, and in my depiction, he is the best actor we have ever seen, after Shah Rukh Khan, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have. Jennifer Lawrence and what do you think she is doing? Archer. Yes, Arch- she is a very good archer. So I showed you uh, four or five pictures of our talented artists. How many of you were aware that they were also skilled at something like that? I'm great to know. Not many not, of us. Not aware. Not many of us. Now I would like you to think. about what's your story when the famous artist who deliver acting and it is there in their blood and they do it so professionally they get time to practice something that is inquisitive and it keeps them engaged and it keeps their arts coming out what is stopping you i read a phrase from one of the speaker ankur variko he in his newsletter he mentioned only thing that stops anyone who is talented is hard work think about it is your hard work stopping you or you are yet to figure out what is your hidden talent take a moment to reflect on your hidden talents maybe there are some passions that are dormant within you waiting to be awakened take this as a awakening call just as these celebrities have embraced their hidden talents so too can we harness a unique attributes to bring joy fulfillment and meaning to our lives all right let's keep the flow of the meeting moving along with our hidden talents the second section let's call gear up for the second section of a meeting and that is the table topic section come on everyone pull up your socks for a fun and exciting table topic section it will be conducted by our table topic master Deepa Bandari Dosma Sadipa is a fitness as well as a business enthusiast and is very keen on public speaking which you would see reflected in her energy levels as she shoots the topics please welcome a table topic master Deepa over to you table topic master 
Firstly, thank you so much, uh, Team Or, uh, Toastmaster Yogita, for that contagious uh, energy that you have uh, uh, spread across uh, as Team Or uh, today. I, I I really loved your role. A very good morning, fellow Toastmasters and your guests. Table topics is the most fun-filled segment usually in any Toastmasters meeting because here, not only the members can speak, but also the guests get an opportunity to speak on the topic given by the table topic master. Table topics is an impromptu session where you have no idea about the topic that will be given to you. But one thing that you can be sure about is definitely you will get a topic where you will have to think right on the spot, gather all your thought process, think on your toes quickly and talk about talk on that topic given to you for about one to two minutes and if you exceed two minutes 30 seconds then you will be disqualified by taking participation in such impromptu seg segment in toastmasters meeting toastmaster is helping you to become a confident speaker when situations arise be it professionally or personally, when you have to speak on random questions asked to you, especially in professional life. So I request everyone to take this opportunity and speak on the topic that will be given to you by myself, anything that comes to your mind. Okay, so without further ado, let's get this segment started. So who would want to volunteer on the first topic? Any hands up? Okay, it's already. Okay, I would like to call upon um, Ritwik Raj. Ritwik Raj, ready? Yes. Okay, so your first topic is, you have to believe in yourself when no one else does. I repeat, you have to believe in yourself when no one else does. I was listening to one of the conversation, one of the convocation addresses by Rahul Ravid, where he mentions the story of a bamboo tree, wherein it takes probably four years when it is down the uh, down below the ground, but overnight or over few days, it shoots up and shows up on the skies. The, take, the takeaway being that you have to persist, you have to resist and believe in yourself when no one does. Of course, everything becomes an overnight success when, when things uh, results are clear, right? I will read into this uh, article by for Ushan Bolt, where it mentions that out of all the Olympic goals he has won, which is not maximum of more than maybe 30 seconds of his race, and per second, the earnings is more than millions, right? And for that, he mentioned that he has trained over the years to make it within those seconds, right, for winning the race. So the I totally resonate with this topic when you say, that you have to believe in yourself when no one does because that is where the persistence and the resistance because every good thing takes time, uh, right? There's a gestation period to everything. So back to you, TTM Deepa. Thank you so much, uh, Ritwik, for uh, thinking so spontaneously and uh, sharing a wonderful story. Absolutely. When you don't believe yourself, then how will you expect anybody else to believe in yourself or, uh, or your abilities? Thank you so much. Now let's go on to our second uh, speaker, Prabha. Would you like to go next? Okay. Yeah. So your topic is, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. So, um, it's important to keep on going on your, uh, on your things. Um, let's say if you have to achieve something, it doesn't matter. Uh, if your progress is slow, uh, but the only thing that matters is perseverance and uh, your focus on the things. Uh, because when you lose focus and you stop doing things that you want to do in your life, what happens is uh, you go off track, and then uh, it it takes it takes a lot of energy to come back to the same track again. 
uh, this I can relate with my Toastmaster journey. So when I started off, um, I was in <laughs> great energy and I was taking part in uh, roles and actively uh, 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 attending the meetings. But as I got the uh, as I uh, got busy with other things in my life, um, I um, happened to have this break of uh, like three four months, and now it is like really uh, really difficult to get back on the track of uh, you know uh, uh, on this journey of Toastmaster where uh, my goals are to become uh, good at public speaking and uh, be a good leader. So it doesn't matter uh, if. Uh, if if your progress is slow, if you are doing it slow, but the only thing matters is you keep on doing things uh, uh, consistently and no matter what. Yeah, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Prabha. Absolutely. There is a saying called uh, slow and steady wins the race. race. Uh, it, it's a bit better late than never. So I'm happy that at least you have resumed your journey and I wish you all the very best. Now let's go, to, go on to our third speaker. Shravan? Uh, uh, Deepa, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, 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 sir. I can hear you. Two speakers can we have from the room, please? Two speakers. The next few speakers can we please have from the room? We have Don't a lot you. of and guests. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. After done with uh, Shravan, let's uh, go to the. No, let's do the in-person speakers first. Then we'll again go back to the online speakers. Okay, all right. Let's go move on to the in-person speakers. Who would like to volunteer? Because I cannot really see anybody else apart from. Uh... No, Nitish Kannan. All right. Nitish Kannan. All right. Okay. May you please come on the camera, sir? Can't see you. All right. Okay. Yeah. Can see you. Clear now. Okay. So your topic is be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Be yourself because everyone else is already taken. You know, that's, that's a very good saying for most people. But for some people, it's a very dangerous thing to say. <laughs> Sometimes you actually look at people and say, actually try not to be yourself and try to be someone else. Um, but it works for most people. Um, what, you know, you, you tend to say that to people when you specifically have to make them feel comfortable, um, especially when you're speaking in an impromptu topic like this, when you have butterflies in your stomach, people generally tell you at the back, uh, be yourself, you'll be fine, actually, don't worry about it. Uh, just be yourself, just be your natural self, let it all flow out, let it all come out, um, you will do well. Uh, but it works in, in those situations, um, it does not work especially when you start drinking or when you have a couple of spirits in you, uh, that is when you actually have to tell that person, don't be yourself. Uh, because the combination of yourself and the spirits uh, usually means bad news for everyone around you. So those are the situations where you would actually say, uh, try and be someone else at that point. So uh, good one to take home, um, but situationally and depending on the person you're talking to, I think you've got to modify that a bit. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Wonderfully said. Absolutely. When there are really good uh, things to learn from others, why not uh, personify the other person? Uh, but let's not also lose the unique uh, uniqueness of you, you being you. All right. So with that wonderful take, uh, somebody said uh, Marutesh. Is Marutesh there uh, in the... Offline meeting there. Mahavi. 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 Ma sorry? Mahavi. He's coming. Uh -huh. Mahavi. Okay. Okay. Mahavi. Right. Can I have okay. Mahavi is a chan. Chan. Yeah. Okay. So your topic, Mar uh, Mahavir, is don't let yesterday take up too much of today. Don't let yesterday take up too much of your today. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for the wonderful topic. So it's uh, very common for us to keep thinking about what we have done earlier and forget what we are doing at the moment. It so happens we don't know what we are doing right now just because what happened yesterday. So it is always great to look forward to what to do next rather than sitting in the past and remaining there. As a previous topic, you need to keep flowing. You just cannot be stagnant. So again, being in the past keeps you there. You need to keep moving forward. That's the way the life is. That's the way things evolve. 
yeah so that's my topic thanks thank you so much uh, i have taken this topic is also from one of the movie i don't know how many of you have watched this movie kung fu panda there is a very beautiful phrase where it is said that uh, don't think too much about yesterday don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is a mystery yesterday is history but today is a today is a gift that's why it is called present absolutely wonderfully said okay now who would like to go next janvi janvi okay all right so janvi here's your topic success is failing nine times and getting up on the 10th success is failing nine times and getting up on the 10th i sometimes think it's difficult to appreciate something if you are able to get it right in the first way so i would not have appreciated this toastmasters meeting if it weren't for covid and the three years where i had to attend all the meetings online so this wouldn't have been a success for me if it weren't for those online meeting where i struggled to express myself talk to people in person and get at least to one meeting in person so i wouldn't have appreciated this that's one thing the appreciation part of success which comes with multiple failures secondly if you don't fail so many times you wouldn't build that inner urge to succeed the next time let's just say you succeed the first time itself then you wouldn't have that strong desire to come back even stronger the next time so that is what you achieve with failure more importantly you have now documented things which you know don't don't work for sure and you could say in your story that okay i tried so many things you could be a proud speaker and say that okay i have tried so many things you could be a great example to the world and say for sure that i tried these these did not work maybe you should avoid those so you also have a learning that comes with those failures which you could share with the world so i think more importantly with failures you try to appreciate things more you uh, have a greater in our urge to succeed and you have a lot of learnings for yourself as well, as well as for the generations to come so yeah let's let's embrace the failures as equally as successes that's all for me at wonderful said janvi is actually saying that a uh, failure is the true teacher in your life because success will not teach you as much as what failure will teach here everyone who is a toastmaster throughout their journey i'm very sure that they would have had lot of flops in the beginning that's how they have been able to succeed to become a confident speaker now because that's definitely one of the thing that i resonate to personally now let's go on to our next speaker yogesh let's move on to the online speakers yogesh are you ready yeah okay be grateful for the little things and find peace in them be grateful for the little things and find peace in them okay it is always very important to enjoy the day to day life of yours and all the small small achievements that you have achieved every day you cannot make big achievements you can't do inventions or discoveries these are the small things uh which uh you can enjoy and which happens regularly to you and which keeps you going so you have to be grateful and you have to be happy and you have to be content with whatever achievements that you have uh, done or the small small things that happens uh to you in the life that's uh, very important you can't keep chasing uh Uh, by seeing others okay that person has achieved something huge why have i not achieved and not being content or happy so it's very important for you to focus on your goal focus on your journey and focus on your uh, destiny at the end of the day 
so all these small small achievements some day over a period of time will lead to some, something significant and substantial so uh, that's my take on your topic thank you thank you yogesh absolutely with uh, with having so many ambitions and desires in life we often forget to be grateful and uh, show that gratitude towards the little things what we have achieved or what god has given to us in this life absolutely um now i would like to move on to our next uh, speaker who yeah. is uh, in person more guests in person we do okay do we have who who's who, who would want to go yeah hey, baby anybody there okay is it jay yeah. jayant your surname yeah jayant bagus b a r g h s all right uh yeah. the entrepreneur okay so for you let me give you something about mind as as you are an entrepreneur the mind is everything what you think you become the mind is every, what you think you become Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Deepa, for the topic and uh, dear Toastmasters. Uh, like uh, Satish just said, I mean, standing before you and talking uh, impromptu uh, is a lot of uh, uh, hard burn. <laughs> But uh, having said that, see, uh, I I think most of what we are talking about is in the mind. And while I was talking to a friend here during the coffee break, I figured that uh, I, I was asking him questions about. how do you compose yourself did you memorize things and he clearly went on to tell me that uh, 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 the, the time right things just improve right i mean and he didn't really spend time uh, reminiscing about what he decided the previous day he was in fact preparing through the day as he went uh, 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 so having said that uh, uh, if you are able to kind of be in a space in your mind where you get clearly think and communicate clearly and and anticipate questions that would come to you and be uh, in, in the flow i think most of these things would work for you uh, maybe over the next few times i mean i'll try and be a little more geared towards being a little more prepared and have this delivered uh, more consistently yeah thank you so much thank you so much i can resonate to you i'll tell you one of my personal experience when i went as a guest uh, to my first uh, toastmasters i was wondering how these people are so fluent in speaking uh, uh, topics that they don't even know uh, how these people are like so Uh, professional enough to speak like tedx speakers and this is definitely not the forum where i i fit into later i got to know that they write scripts and they practice and then deliver the speech otherwise i was thinking definitely this is not the place where i belong <laughs> all right anybody else uh, who is there online who would want to go next before oh, i can i, I, oh, I like take can i take sure and then uh, we can come to mohan sorry who 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 was it Mohan, Mohan, Mohan is there in this room. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. So Mohan, Mohan, I will also Mohan. like to take. Yeah. All right. Okay, I will keep two topics. Can, uh, Deepa, can, uh, can I? Deepa, the last speaker will be uh, the last speaker. You can give uh, to Sanjay, and we can end the last speaker because we are over time. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Mohan. Okay, Mr. Mohan. okay money is not the only answer but it definitely makes a difference money is not the only answer but it definitely makes a difference so okay i will show so money is important to everyone so whatever we are working for example some people work for money some people work for passion some people work for i want to buy build something i want to buy house buy i want to travel something instead of this like if you are liking some if you are working something on passion so money will automatically comes to you so if you are focusing on only money you can never satisfy never be happy also so you should working for example if you are interested in a travel you should also you should go on traveling you should just think in a entrepreneur mindset think in a business mindset think in a helping mindset how how you can help your travel experience to public how you, how you can uh, uh, share the knowledge of traveling experience to people there also you can earn money so instead of like that so earning money is like important to everyone so i would encourage everyone should like 
passion work and passion something someone likes a writer something like actor something like uh, sport someone likes like traveling so instead of these things if you are working on something passion so money will comes to you end of the day it will take some time it, it will not come to you like it within months or years it will sometimes people will take five years some people will take decade so we cannot compare with others with others so money will come one day to us thank you thank you so much definitely money is what most of us are striving and working for <laughs> that we the one of the reason also why we are here, here because we want to become professional speakers so we can make good money in the corporate world but though it is everything but definitely it is not uh, everything that we want in our lives okay to the last topic uh, to toastmaster sanjay nothing is impossible because the word itself says i am possible nothing is impossible because the word itself says i am possible yeah th thank you for giving me a topic uh, uh, every time uh, we think something is impossible uh, we uh, we uh, we uh, we uh, fail in that uh, thing uh, once we made our mind that nothing is impossible then we succeed in that things uh, now if you see so many inventions have happened because the person who has invented has uh, always thought that it is a possible whether it may be a bulb or a ai technology the when the person has thought in his mind that it is possible he is able to build that technology and that thing it may be uh, not we we, can, we are not able to imagine that uh, uh, today we will think that it is not possible uh, but tomorrow somebody would have created that technology and we as we think you now it is possible so only we have to understand that everything is possible universe has given us so much power and so much things to do that only our mind can uh, has to go in deep and understand the universe and uh, take it in a positive manner that it is possible only the word i am possible should come not i am not impossible should not come in our mind then we will achieve great heights and great results in our day to day life and we will make a impact on the society and environment which we live so that is a take from me yeah thank you very much yeah thank you so much toastmaster sanjay for sharing that wonderful thought i absolutely believe that uh, i again want to say that mind is everything that you think that you uh, what you think you become uh, half the battle is won when you convince yourself that you are possible and not focus on the negative things thinking that something is impossible okay so with that uh, last topic we conclude our table topics i hope everybody had a wonderful session taking participation and listening to the other speakers so with this i would like to hand it over back to our team or uh, toastmaster yogita thank you very much table topic master deepa for the fantastic and energetic table topic section you brought to the table a blend of topics that completely synced with the theme of the day as well as the objectives of our toastmasters meeting can we have a round of applause for our toastmasters for our table topic master for a job well done congratulations to all the speakers as well who have addressed their fears through this fun session timer could you please tell us if there are any disqualifications Oh, yeah. Alvia, are you there? She unmuted, but it not hear. Uh, okay, she said she would join back. Nevertheless, we keep moving ahead with the meeting. Moving towards the end of the meeting, we have a last section, that is the general evaluation session. For that, I would like to invite Toastmaster Chaitanya to share his evaluation with his wonderful team. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Yogita. Now let's move on towards the evaluation quickly, for which I would like to call our first evaluator, Distinguished Toastmaster Saurav Datta, who will be evaluating Toastmaster Anand Krishnan. Distinguished Toastmaster Saurav Datta is a winner of two DTM awards and has completed 10 paths in Toastmaster Pathways. 
He has been a president's distinguished division director and a distinguished area director in the past. He is the VP education at the Gabby's Toastmaster Club. Over to you, distinguished Toastmaster Saurabh. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, let me just... Okay. Toastmaster Anand, what can I tell about your speech? As an average Jew, I think everyone in this room, I'm assuming everyone is average, I'm not a minority. Though. I think all of us could relate with your speech because we have gone through the trouble of dealing with your Sharma Ji Kabeta or Padosi Kapindu or the Karen or the perfect Peter. Someone somewhere has been bothering us, right? There's always that person who gets A scores, um, you know, can swim fast, run fast, physically fit, the perfect good boy, knows good manners. And our parents use them as an example day in and day out to talk to our children. So absolutely relatable as a speech. Your specific purpose, as you stated, was to convey that making memories is more important than the accuracy of the memories later on. But I think you achieved more than that. What you delivered is an entertaining speech packed with humor. I think each of us here absolutely enjoyed the five to seven minutes of your speech. In fact, you left us wanting more. First, the opening, absolutely outstanding. People who have missed his speech, he started with an opening where it was a question and a question that is something which immediately woke us up, right? So it was not like a very normal question that how many of you would want to do this? No, it was like, like this. The question came and we were like, okay, this we have to listen to, right? So that was the kind of reaction that we got from, uh, from the audience. You checked all the boxes in terms of a good speech, in terms of an outstanding opening, in terms of transitions, in terms of conclusions, bang on. And this was a quick crash course on humor. Observational humor, yes. Sarcasm, yes. Satire, yes. Puns and word plays, yes. Self-deprecating humor, yes. So I think if anyone wants to learn engaging humor, please watch the five to seven minutes uh, speech and you will know how to use humor. Now, two recommendations I have for you. The first one, it was a great stand-up comedy, right? But this was not a stand-up comedy. This was a speech. You had a very clear message that you had to deliver. I did not see that message coming across. See, the objective of the speech is that we always exaggerate, bang on. But that was not an objective of your speech. So for this kind of speech, I would say, take one story, build on that to deliver the message instead of so many different stories. And secondly, we have got Ayona in this meeting. We have, uh, you know, Sudharma in this meeting. Would they know who Sharma Ji Ka Beta is? Would they understand what Sharma Ji Ka Beta means? A more global reference like Perfect Peter would probably make more sense. So to sum it up, a great speech, great delivery, Generous usage of humor, absolute entertainer, with a speech which is so relatable in terms of the topic. Just ensure that you keep in mind the global audience, the global perspective, and your core message when you're delivering your next speech. Thank you. Thank you, DTM Saurabh Datta, for covering all the points and suggestions that you had for your target speaker. Now let's move on to the uh, second evaluation. Our second evaluator is Toastmaster Mukun Joshi, who is evaluating Toastmaster Sandeep Belekar. Toastmaster Mukun is a certified public accountant by qualification and finance process transformation expert by profession. He says one of his strong desire is to become a decent public speaker. And also he loves to play golf. Over to you, Toastmaster Mukun. Thank you, General Evaluator. A great intro great transitions, a nice little story about a little boy, suspense, a seesaw of emotions right from humor to tragedy, and most of it all, irony. All of these elements were present in the speech. Respected General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, and Sandeep in particular. What a lovely speech that was. The introduction with the humor entwined in it made us all become immediately interested in the speech. We all sat up and watched, were eager to hear what was going to come up next. The conflict that you brought in between a dad and a mom about what their boy wanted to be 
was also brought down very well. In fact, that conflict showed us how someone, say a mother who wanted his son to become a pilot, and you know what happened after he became a pilot, whereas the dad who wanted him to be a doctor couldn't get his ambitions fulfilled or his desire fulfilled. The suspense about the secret mission of the erstwhile little boy, and I'm now talking about the body of the speech, the suspense about the secret mission of the erstwhile little boy, the irony of he being elated at his mission that would end the war, and he ending up in killing 70,000 people. This entire irony was brought out very well in the body of your speech. And there was excellent eye contact, very relevant hand gestures in your whole speech. If at all there was something that I could recommend to, to be included in this whole speech was something which was uh, one of the main essence of the speeches, which is basically the vehicle variety, right? I thought the tone of your speech was more or less same throughout. Although there were some variations, right? For instance, you started with a big bang, your voice was very high, the tone was very high initially when you started off. And then I thought it became bland and it became same throughout the speech. You, you could have been particularly little more dramatic in your tone when you were talking about, say, when the bomb was getting dropped on Hiroshima. Or you could have brought in or the voice could have been a little more subdued when you are talking about 70,000 people being dead. And you could have added a few more references saying that that bombing not only changed the present generation, but it affected people for more generations to come. So something like that could have been added in the whole speech. So, so all the more, it was an excellent speech. But as far as the body language goes, I don't think I can talk much because I don't know if we can use much body language given the constraint in the space. But other than that, an excellent speech. I really hope to hear more speeches from you in the coming. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Toastmaster <laughs> Mukund, for your insights. And yes, Toastmaster Sandeep's speech was really engaging and I was completely glued the whole time he was speaking. Now let's move on to our third evaluation. Uh, a third evaluator is someone who does not need much introduction as she is also the presiding officer of the day. A third evaluator is distinguished Toastmaster Nancy Goel, who is evaluating uh, Toastmaster Sanjay Jain. Over to you, distinguished Toastmaster Nancy Goel. Thank you so much, Toastmaster. Of, uh, thank you so much, General Evaluator, Toastmaster Chaitanya. And hello to my target speaker, Toastmaster Sanjay Jain. Toastmaster Sanjay, you talked about time. Time is precious. If I think about your speech, did you have a story? Yes. The moment you talked about your wife and how you had discussion with her regarding the car, you had a story. So your project where it was demanding you to connect with your audience with a story, you had one. You had ethos, logos, pathos. When you were talking about this particular topic, well in place, so that we can understand more. For example, you had logos where you talked about the logic. How much time do we spend particularly in a year working for any company? So do we have work? How can we have work-life balance or how we can improve on our work-life work balance? So that was well done. That's about the content part of it. Now, I would want to share a couple of recommendations for you for your speech. This is level three, project three, which means expectations are much higher from the speaker. First thing first, there was a lot of noise in the speech. When I say noise, you're talking about Saturdays and Sundays, but you are saying Saturdays and something like that. Something like that is an, uh, uh, rather a filler word that you could have avoided by practice, simply by practice. So instead of saying just like that, things like that, something like that, Please avoid such things when you are at higher levels, not expected from a speaker. Second thing, you shared a PPT with all of us. Were we all able to relate to the PPT? At this juncture, I would want you to reflect on this. Was it actually required? The project is about connecting with storytelling. And that's where storytelling itself was a tool that you were supposed to use. And you used it in your speech. PPT, could you deliver the message? Could you have delivered the message without the PPT? In my opinion, 
PPT was just a visual aid which was not required in this particular setup. Third thing, I felt your story was there, but the transitions in the story was missing. You talked about purchasing a car where anger made decisions faster. And then the second thing is about having a lot of time in our kitty where we can have work-life balance. I didn't understand how these two things are connected. What was the core message? What was the thing that you wanted us to understand? What is it that we could take away from this entire speech? Was it time is precious or anger help us make decision faster or work-life balance? So it was a little haywire when it comes to the core message of the speech. So I would want you to reflect on these three things, the transitions of the speech, the as and arms that the filler words that you are using and the visual aids that, that you were using in the speech, which were not required. Apart from that, a connect was there with the storytelling. However, look into these little things and I'm sure you will do a, deliver, you will deliver a better speech next time. Thank you. Over to you, Ji. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Nancy, and thank you all the evaluators for giving such a great insights and evaluation for the speakers. And these insights are not just helpful for the speakers, but for all of us who are in this meeting today, we can use their uh, insights, the pros and cons, whatever they said, and implement it in our speeches as well. Now let's move on to our Taggle report. So first, I would like to call the timer, Toastmaster Alvia, to present her report. Toastmaster Alvia, I think there is a problem with your mic. Even if she shares it on chat also, it's fine if she can't speak because I think she's having a struggle. With the mic. Yes. Toastmaster Alvia, please share the timer report in the chat for everyone to see. Yes, we can see your screen right now. So you can hold it for a second. So under table topics, there's only one disqualification and rest everyone has qualified. Thank you, Toastmaster Alvia, for the report. Please share it in the chat for everyone. Now let me call upon the R counter, Toastmaster Sudharma Pereira, to present her report. Thank you, Jalayu Let me share my screen. Hope you can see my screen. Today we have 21 speakers and uh, Postma Sri Lakshmi and guest Mahir, Mahir, Mahavir didn't use any arcs, terms. I didn't hear any unnecessary sounds. Congratulations and shall we have a round of applause to this Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi and guest Mahir. And let's use it. Toastmaster Deepa used less amount of arcs and terms. And I will share this report on the chat also. Over to you, General Thank you, Toastmaster Sudharma, for that crisp report. Let me now call upon the grammarian of the day, Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi Hegde, to present her report. Can I share my screen? Yes. Today, word of the day is aptitude, a natural ability or skill. We will we'll, we'll take your personal aptitude and abilities into your account. My kid has little aptitude for sport. I even posted in the chat box meaning and example also in the chat box. I was expecting more people to use it, but we have only two people uh, use the word of the day. That is uh, speaker one, Anand Krishna, and Toshmash of the day, Yogita Upadhyay. Now coming to some good usage of the uh, usages in the meeting. First main exaggerated thing in the world. Exaggerated first main exaggerated thing in the world. Paul's father was dead against it by Toshmash Sandeep. The mission was honored to his mother, Toshmash Sandeep. Time is precious. Use it wisely. Toastmaster Sanjay Jain. Extraordinary. Toastmaster of the day. Yogita Upadhyay. Uh, contagious energy. Toastmaster Deepa. Think on your toes. Toastmaster Deepa. Spontaneously. Post-TTM. Toastmaster Deepa. Toastmaster Deepa has used many good usage of the words today. Congratulations to her. And hyperfora. Question and then answer. How many of you think time is precious? 
as we thought time is precious by Toshmasters and Jai. And who doesn't know King Khan, the Bollywood, King, the Basha of Bollywood? King, who doesn't know King Khan, the Basha of Bollywood by Toshmasters Yogita Upadhyay? And uh, for metaphor, uh, uh, analog and similes comparison, the bomb is called Little Boy by Toastmaster Sandeep. It's very good to say for some people, but it's dangerous to say. And uh, anaphora, the repetition of a word or, or phrase in the beginning of success clauses. Focus on your journey, focus on your destiny by Toastmaster Yogis. Yo Yo by Toastmaster Yogesh, sorry. And uh, some recommendation. We we miss our deadlines. We it's a past then it's a past. We should have said we miss. It should be we miss the deadline. You, you uh, the speaker told we miss we miss our deadline. It should be we miss the deadline. What you toast must J J in Chaitanya. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi, for that amazing report. Now let's move on to the listener of the day, Toastmaster Raghava. Hi all, uh, hi all Toastmasters. It's a good listening to all silently in the whispers, listening to all the whispers of table uh, speaking and table topics. So just uh, coming to the first question. So in the speaker session one, uh, good old days. What is the definition of party mentioned um, by the speaker? Yeah. Uh, so everyone is angry and then it's well connected there. So and uh, coming to speaker session two, so where he painted his mother name, where the center of the story uh, it's a specific part of the plane. So on the wing. On the wings, yeah. wings. Bonnet. Fuselage. He said he mentioned that the bonnet of the plane. It's actually fuselage, but it's a bonnet of the plane as he mentioned. Okay. So uh, coming to the third uh, speaker uh, session three, how many days he, he, even though he used multiple numbers to uh, counter his logic, how many days he has mentioned that company offers as leaves or holidays? 45. 54. Close, 55. close to that. 55. Okay. 42. 42. Yeah. Yeah, 42. It's correct. 42 is correct. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, and uh, next question. In the table topic sessions, uh, table topic session one, what is the story of, what is the tree name quoted by Rahul Dravid? In the as mentioned by Ritvik Raj. Bamboo. Yes. Though it's a not a tree, it's officially declared as plant, but uh, the it is mentioned as a bamboo tree. Okay. And uh, it is mentioned by table topic four session. After that, it is mentioned by uh, TM, TM Odi. What is a movie that it inspired that uh, don't let yesterday take up and uh, tomorrow of today. Kung Fu Panda. Too much of today, sorry. Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, that's right. And last question. So in the table topic nine, nothing is impossible because the world, it's, uh, world itself says it's possible. What are the inventions of technology he mentioned during the table topic? Two inventions he has mentioned that I think is impossible just to highlight that. Something AI. Yes, one is that and other one? Robotics. No. So the first almost the first invention which everyone like all world relies on. So. Internet. Bulb. Bulb, yes, it's correct. So it's good to hear all that uh, everyone is hearing a uh, lot of energy and enthusiasm over the whole period of time. So uh, good to be a listener too. So thank you. Thank you all Toastmasters and General Evaluator. So over to you. Thank you Toastmaster Raghava and thank you Tagal team for your lovely report. Now let me present my uh, general evaluation report and I'll begin from the beginning. So I have made pointers so I'll be reading them out in between. 
before the meeting started most of the members had joined in and everyone was greeted and everyone was having a fun conversation and i found this a very good way to settle in just before the meeting the meeting started on time and then our sa distinguished toastmaster saurav datta introduced us to the rules and ethics that the club follows which is very important and along with this he also mentioned uh, about the gabby's family and the website for for the guests and the non members who can look it up on the website so it was a good initiative then coming to the presiding officer very energetic she set the tone for the meeting and the, her energy was contagious like before her good morning everyone was okay yes good morning and after that everyone was very loud and energetic so amazing way to start the meeting and she made all the necessary announcements mentioned the achievements all the great achievements that avis has done and she also introduced each and every guest who is attending the meeting today which is a very good way to make everyone feel comfortable and included in uh, in an hybrid setup or online or any kind of meeting now let's come to the table topic master first she explained the importance of uh, table topics very well and how it is carried out in toastmasters in general one point that uh, it would be great if you could uh, also post the topics in the chat as well for everyone to read it uh, otherwise there was there were many numbers of topics and everyone could get a chance the offline and the online members everyone had a chance to speak and uh, it was an amazing round of table topics now let's come to the toastmaster of the day she introduced the topic the hidden talents the theme of the day very well to us and showed us some unique hidden talents which uh, i didn't know few of them like, actually existed like bending of spoon was actually a thing for people around the world and this uh, this presentation also caught everyone's attention so people were really engaged in that and uh, she really kept track of time everything was going as per the agenda and as per plan give me a second please yes one suggestion for toastmaster of the day uh, it would be great if you could also tell us the importance of hidden talents uh, one can have and how to discover them uh, so that would uh, conclude the theme of the day uh, overall the since this meeting was hybrid uh, the switching between the online and offline members was very smooth and uh, there was not a glitch so amazing work done for for arranging this meeting and uh, the people who have worked in the background for arranging this uh, hybrid session so that will be all from my side over to you toastmaster of the day thank you general evaluator for such a positive and detailed evaluation so master meanwhile we go towards the end of the meeting i would request you to launch the poll for all the roll takers meanwhile to conclude i would start with a story just hear me out once there lived a spanish boy named jose who played guitar and had a partner named zari who was the best dancer in the city of madrid jose would easily get scared to play the guitar with zari as she would dance confidently and everyone loved her he was always scared as if he would always make a mistake and she he would embarrass zari for which he used to skip zari had to perform alone at many times but she would never discourage jose one day when he skipped a show he was sitting near a pond thinking how to bring his confidence back at that moment he saw a beggar who was wearing a torn pant and a dirty shirt he had a very dirty drum with two sticks he was playing the drum thump thump and singing a song with a bowl with a few coins <laughs> after a few minutes he went to a store bought a bread and started eating it Jos was stunned. He was immediately startled. He saw it. He bought a water bottle of water and gave it to the beggar and asked him, "How are you so confident? You are a beggar. I mean, you are not even sure if you are going to get your uh, money tomorrow. If you are going going to get the food tomorrow." The beggar said, "Singing was his passion, and when he closed his eyes, he felt he was the king of the world. He used to forget all his worries." Jos tried to use that advice and went to the performance stage. Zeri was very happy. He closed his eyes. 
and thought he was thinking of all the good things that would happen if the performance went well. Without knowing, he delivered the best performance of his life and he got the first prize. Zari asked him what had brought such a big change instantly in him. He said, someone had opened his eyes by singing carelessly in the most difficult time of his life. Zari asked who? And he said, he is a beggar. He had found out his hidden talent. From that day, he always sang and played this guitar confidently. And now this is not a story, my dear Toastmasters. And guess, this is a real-time story which is inspired by Thea Stel Stilton's Spanish dance mission. I urge each of you to embrace the spirit of discovery and exploration as we uncover the hidden talents that lie within. Whether it's through music, art, dance, or any form of expression, let's celebrate the diversity of our talents and the joy that we bring to our lives. As we are going to part ways today, I encourage you to reflect on the importance of fun and play in our journey of self-discovery. Now, I do not know how and when can you discover your hidden talents, but I am sure that they are already there. Just need to pause, think, what excites you the most? What you can do carelessly, apart from sleeping, of course. Just as children delight in uncovering the hidden treasures, so can we by finding joy in exploring the hidden talents. This is a process and it takes time. Let's embark on this adventure together as we have in, uh, embarked on this journey in Toastmasters of discovering of our, one of our hidden talents of public speaking and bringing out the confidence that is very, very helpful to each and everyone. Let's embrace the magic of unveiling hidden talents. Now, I would hand the back, I would hand back the baton to the presiding officer. Thank you. Wow, that was a smooth meeting, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Yes. I'm hearing a lot of yes from the room for people who are sitting congestively here. My sincere apologies for the seating arrangement today. That was not expected, but it's a problem. Good problem to have. We'll make arrangements next time better. Thank you so much. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Yogita, for asking us for asking us to reflect on our hidden talents. And when you were talking about these hidden talents, I reflected. And I got to understand this after general evaluator's report that my hidden talent is to speak loudly, <laughs> to bring energy in the room, to put it in a nicer way. Thank you so much. We Can we have a round of applause for our Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Yogita? That was quite an interesting meeting. That's what I would love to feel, but I want to hear it from our guest as well. Online, offline, anyone who would like to come forward and share their feedback. I can't see everyone uh, in the online setup. Do we have guest? Okay, I see. We'll come to online guests a little later. We'll first start with offline people, people uh, sitting with us in this room. May I request someone to share their feedback, starting with Mr. Satish. Mr. Satish, how did it go? Well, I thought it went really well. Um, the, the meeting uh, I thought was very smooth between the online and the offline uh, transitions. I felt uh, it was quite seamless, actually. There was uh, the hybrid uh, session worked extremely well. As you already mentioned, the room could have been a little larger. But other than that, I felt uh, the meeting was flawless. Well done, guys. Well done. Give everyone a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Feedback taken on the room. Thank you. Thank you so much. Feedback taken on the room part. Next time, bigger room. Given we have this much audience, maybe hear it from Mr. Jayan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, see, I have been part of uh, BNI for some time now, and I've always thought that the BNI meetings were extremely structured. But having been here, I figure that I mean you also have a, a, a fairly good structure and very well organized. 
uh, congratulations and I hope to be part of this and I hope to kind of learn from this going forward. And I hope you can accept me into the group here. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. We would love to have you as part of our group. And yes, talking about structure, we'll come to the unstructured part right after the meeting. Next, maybe hear it from Mr. Mohan. Right. Yeah, this was really great, like kind of learning exposure, like where I learned about the timing sense, listening sense, and uh, find out the grammatical issues and say so like this is my first meeting attended like where hybrid and in person the only feedback like where we can folks who are in bangalore like if it, they're having personal things we can't force them but it's possible we can attend in person the in-person bond is different we can strengthen the bond like we can improve like uh, uh skills and more things that is the only feedback thank you so much thank you mr mohan Maybe hear it from Chanvi. You can head out for a beer after this, you know, in your interest. Absolutely, absolutely. Perks of being in person. Yeah, so this was my first in-person meeting. I've been a Toastmaster for close to three years now. But I mean, I did not expect in-person meetings to be this great. And one thing that I noticed is it's more difficult and a little bit more overwhelming to speak in person than as compared to online. So I just think that's a good push for people to be better speakers. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I, do, I look forward to attending more meetings. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chandi. Chandi, which club are you from? I did in Toastmasters. I did in Toastmasters, all right. Thank you. Maybe hear it from Mr. Mahavir. Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you everyone and uh, thanks Satish for inviting me for this meeting. It is a uh, pleasure being here and uh, to be, yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, communication is one of the most uh, important aspects. So if you're not able to express yourself, uh, what's in your mind? And it's great Toastmaster is uh, focusing on the most important aspect one has to have and yeah, greatly conducted the uh, meeting. And uh, looking forward to be part of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not the least in the in-person audience are, do I call him a guest or rather more of Gabby's than the Gabby's themselves? Please. Uh, oh, ha, let, can we have Mr. Rajesh, Toastmaster Rajesh for his few words? Hello, everyone. Uh, I actually today I'm late today for this meeting. I wanted to be here uh, before time. I want to be 9.40, but I can reach here from 11 o'clock only. I am the Gabby's, I think uh, it's my second home club. I am being part of this. Uh, I can reach out to these Gabby's members for any time, any, any time when we need any help. I'm also a brand ambassador of the Gabby's Toastmasters. <laughs> always promote to my club members to reach out to attend the Gabby's meeting. And I always, if they want to ask about anything about how to prepare the Toastmaster, uh, the Toastmaster day or like the median roads, some roads, go and watch that Gabby's Toastmaster Club YouTube video. You will get to know so many things. So I am more than a guest and the brand ambassador of the Gabby's Toastmaster Club. No <laughs> Gabby's than the Gabby's themselves. <laughs> yes, since Rajesh was late today in the meeting, he just mentioned to me offline that the samosas are on him, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can we hear it from online guest? We have Shravan, Shravan Kumar. Hello. Hello, Toastmasters of Gabby and other guests and fellow Toastmasters. It's a wonderful meeting, especially theme. Really, I liked it. Uh, it brings out the hidden talent from speakers as well. I only recommendation I would like to say is if your theme and table topics are aligned, the entire uh, meeting will be like a symphony of that theme. So that is the only recommendation I would like to say. I believe today table topics are a bit different from the theme. Uh, so that is the only recommendation. Otherwise, I love to join your club meetings and I would like to give a speech in your uh, club, uh, probably if you permit in future. 
love to hear your speech. You can connect with our VP Education Toastmaster Sudarma Perera for the speaking opportunities. Thank you so much for the feedback. Absolutely agree. It's a symphony if the table topics are aligned with the theme. In today's uh, meeting, what I noticed, table topics were more to motivate others to find hidden talents. More on the motivational line. However, feedback well taken. Thank you so much. Any other yes. guests in the would like to share their feedback? Before one, I... one more request to Toastmaster Nancy. Uh, if you have a guest uh, WhatsApp group, could you please include me? I will paste my number in the chat. Sure. I would request uh, one of the XCOM officers to share the WhatsApp group link in the chat box. Sure. Any of the guests Thank to join you. the group. Yeah. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Um, I see Toastmaster Tarachand. Mahendra Kumar Tarachand unmuting himself. Would you like to share your feedback, sir? Sorry, sir. Nothing, nothing much to say. I was on and off the meeting. I couldn't understand. I think you just said you love the meeting. Thank you so much for the feedback. Um, last but not the least, Raghav, um, you are our newest member. Feedback from you before I announce the results. I know we are a little over time. Yeah, sure. It's just not the feedback. I, after listening to the theme of hidden talents, I just reflect myself. My hidden talent is, uh, apart from sleep, what he has mentioned, what she has mentioned. So uh, I'm an amb ambidextrous person. So I can do the same things as the, with the, both the hands. So that is my hidden talent. I just want to share. Everyone to discover their uh, some hidden talent, which might be useful. Thank lovely, you. lovely to know your hidden talent and lovely to see the impact of this theme on the members today, how everyone is reflecting on their hidden talents. Um, it's time to announce the results of the polls that we have conducted. And for the results, I have the results in front of me. I hope everyone has already voted. The best auxiliary role taker for today's meeting. Before I announce the result for best auxiliary role taker, I would rather say we had one person who was uh, extremely new to Toastmasters and who picked up this role, the debutant of listener role, Toastmaster Raghav. Kudos to you for taking up this role for the very first time. Now Thank talking you. about the poll results and the best auxiliary role taker goes to Toastmaster Raghav. Thank you. Lovely. Everyone loved the way you have played this role for the very first time. Many more to come your way. Next, we have best evaluator. Best evaluator goes to distinguished Toastmaster Saurabh Dutta. <laughs> Congratulations, distinguished Toastmaster Saurabh Dutta. If you know, don't know him already. Next, we have best speaker and best speaker for today's meeting goes to Toastmaster. Someone who talked about Sharma Ji ka beta, Toastmaster Anand Krishna. Congratulations, Toastmaster Anand Krishna. Best main role taker for today's meeting goes to someone who made us reflect on our hidden talents our toastmaster of the day toastmaster yogita congratulations last but not the least best table topic speaker we had many speakers from the room and online speakers and it's difficult to read this chart the best speaker best table topic speaker goes to toastmaster not a Toastmaster yet, our guest, Satish Kanal. <laughs> With this, poll results are over and, and, and. As presiding officer for the day to day, I call this meeting to adjourn meeting number 176. Thank you so much. I'll see you on Tuesday and in-person audience over us Mosa right now. Thank you. Have a good day, all of you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Good night.